This video looks at the momentum 4 vector and its relationship to both the velocity 4 vector and the energy of a moving object. And it will also have a look at a head-on collision between two identical particles. Right, the four momentum of a particle with rest mass m0 is defined using the four velocity of the particle. So here we are. We've seen this u in previous videos. In component form, we can write p contravariant uh, superscript mu is m0 u mu. And here are the components. So rest mass, the gamma factor. Um, we can rewrite this first component as m0, m subscript 0, gamma subscript mu, uh, u, sorry, the, the velocity u, times c squared over c, which gives us the energy of the particle. Or putting it over c, we have e over c, and then we have the three spatial components of momentum. Now, a scalar product of the momentum 4 vector, which is what we've just been looking at, is um, m subscript 0 u dotted with itself. Uh, take out, factor out the m subscript 0 squared, and we have the velocity 4 vector dotted with itself, which we saw in a previous video was minus c squared, and now we have the factor with the m subscript 0, the rest mass of the object. So the scalar product of the momentum 4 vector is minus m subscript 0 squared times c squared. Now expressed in component form, we have with a Minkowski metric, eta mu nu, and the components here gives us e squared on c squared minus, and then the spatial components dotted together, and this can be expressed as minus e squared on c squared plus p squared. Now that gives us this expression here that we've just found is, as we've seen earlier, p dot p is minus m0 squared c squared. So this object we just found here in component form is equal to minus m0 c squared times c squared. Now if we multiply through by c squared and by minus 1, we create this important object that we will see more of later. Now let's say we have two frames. We have frame S and the purple observer in frame S at rest in frame S sees an object, a black object here moving by with speed u along its x-axis. And we have a second frame, S prime, uh, moving parallel. The x-axis of both are parallel to each other and it's moving along with it, the blue observer, sorry, sees an object, this object, the same object as the purple observer sees but the blue observer sees it moving with speed u prime in his or her x1 prime direction. So this is just standard configuration. Now in frame S, the energy of the object is m subscript 0, it's rest mass, times gamma subscript u, moving with velocity u, times c squared. In frame S prime, the energy, e prime, is m subscript 0, the rest mass of the object, times gamma subscript mu prime, that's the velocity u prime in the s frame, relative to the observer who is at rest in s, s prime, sees this object going by with speed u prime, uh, and then times c squared here. So there's, a purple observer sees this energy, blue observer sees this energy, both of them are observing the same object, but just in two different frames. These frames may or may not be moving relative to each other. They may be positioned differently. They may, may or may not be moving. The total energy of the particle is what is represented by E, and this includes its rest mass energy and its kinetic energy. When the particle is at rest relative to the observer, we have gamma is equal to 1, and we have the rest, and we have that the energy then is equal to the rest mass only of the object. When the particle is moving with speed u relative to the same observer as before, then gamma is greater than 1, and the particle has both rest mass energy and kinetic energy. So its total energy is E equal to m subscript 0 times gamma u, the speed u, times c squared. What that means is the difference between these two gives us the kinetic energy. So if we're interested in the kinetic energy, then we need the total energy minus the rest mass energy which is this object here, which is the kinetic energy of the object. 
If the two frames, S and S prime, are in relative motion with speed V, then we use the Lorentz transformation to relate them. So the observer in S has this momentum 4 vector, the observer in S prime has this momentum 4 vector, and they are related to each other via the Lorentz transformation. So if the two frames S and S prime are moving relative to each other with speed V, then the observer in S prime will see the values measured by the observer in S multiplied by the Lorentz transformation matrix for standard configuration. Now, any two observers in relative motion will always agree on the following energy momentum invariant, which is the relationship we saw before. So an observer in S can calculate this, the observer in S prime can calculate this, and both will always agree with each other. All right, let's have a look at conservation of momentum and energy. Now, special relativity, both the momentum and energy are conserved in all elastic and inelastic collisions. In uh, Galilean or Newtonian mechanics, you have inelastic collisions don't involve conservation of energy. Only elastic ones do. Whereas in special relativity, all elastic and inelastic collisions conserve both momentum and energy. So a particle at rest mass m0 and momentum is moving towards an identical particle at rest. So here we are, two part identical particles, one at rest and one moving towards the other with energy E. They collide elastically so that they scatter at the same angle. What is the angle? So here we are, two identical particles hit each other and they scatter at a certain angle. Now conservation of momentum means that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Before, the momentum of the first particle, the one on the left that's moving, has energy E, on, uh, e over C, it's the zero component of momentum, and it has momentum P in the X direction, nothing in the Y or Z direction. The second particle at rest has rest mass energy this, and so its zero component momentum is the rest mass energy over C, and its momentum in the X, Y, and Z direction directions, the spatial components are zero. Afterwards, the first particle moves off with this component, the zero component, this x component, and this y component. The second particle, this zero component for momentum, which is its energy over C, x component, and a y component. Because one particle went up the page, one particle went down the page, both particles moving to the right as well zero momentum in the z directions. In the vertical direction we have this minus this. First particle goes up the page, second particle down the page in the vertical direction. That sums to zero. This is the final momentum, F for final. Um, the initial momentum was zero in those directions. And that suggests that P1F is P2F and we can just call that P final. They're both equal to each other. If they're both equal to each other, then that suggests that the energy of both particles is the same as well. So we'll just call that E subscript F. So the final energy of both particles must be equal to the initial energy, which was E plus the rest mass energy. All right. Uh, e for the moving particle coming in from the left, the rest mass energy for the stationary particle just sitting by itself. So that's the total energy before the collision, and this is the total energy after the collision, two particles moving off with energy E subscript F each. So the E subscript F is this object, the initial total energy of the system before the collision, divided by 2. In the horizontal direction, P2F times cos theta plus P2F cos theta equals P. That was the initial momentum of the single particle coming in from the left and momentum in the x direction of P. So this tells us that there's two, these two are identical here, and so one of them is equal to P over 2, which is P is just PF over 2, and the final momentum over 2. So the final momentum vectors for the two particles are the first particle, the zero component of momentum, the x component, the y component, the z component is zero, and the second particle has the same here, same here, except negative 
uh, momentum in the y direction. Now P on 2, now P on 2, now this uh, component here, there was P on 2 times sine, but P2F cos theta is P over 2, uh, so the sine divided by the cos gave us the tan. If you look back through the previous page, you'll be able to make sense of that. Alright, the scalar product of either vector gives P dot P is minus M0 C squared. So we'll just take the first one. Either one, doesn't matter. Both give the same result. Um, this gives square of that plus the square of that plus the square of that plus that is equal to this object here. Multiply through by minus 1. And we'll get this object here. Factorising out the P on 2, all squared. Now, this trigonometric relation, 1 plus tan squared theta, is sec squared theta, or 1 over cos squared theta. All that is equal to that. Now, we we'll just multiply through by 4c squared, and that'll take out the 2 here, the 2 here, we'll take out the c squared here. That'll give us an extra factor of c squared here to get this object. Now, going over the page, we can get cos, theta by, cos squared theta by itself to give us this object. And then we can use the energy momentum invariant to replace that with this object here. As I said earlier, it was a very important relationship. Let's factorise the top using difference of perfect squares. We get this object and this object. Factorise the bottom. And we get this object times this object. Now some things will cancel out here. That one and that one will cancel out. And we're left with this object over this object. That's cos squared theta gives us this. Now the relativistic case is where the energy is much greater than the rest mass of the object and that implies that cos squared theta is approximately 1 which in turn gives us theta is approximately 0 and so both parties would move to the right in the same direction so a very high energy collision relative to the rest mass of the objects. In the non-relativistic case where it is approximately equal to the rest mass of the object the cos theta is around 45 degrees and the particles move in ways familiar to everyday experience such as when playing billiards and that's it